Hello. I have decided it's time to go uh, full steam ahead into my synthesizer business. And so this is just uh, an update. What it takes to make um, synthesizers. Uh, first of all, it took a lot of research. Um, here's the op amp integrator circuit. Designing with logic. Um, all of these chips. Uh, here's an example of some chips that I have. Um, I'm not exactly sure what these two do because I got I pulled them out of something. But a uh, uh, single eight-channel analog multiplexer, day multiplexer. Things look like this, and it comes and it tells you all about the power ratings so that you don't blow it up. Um, this has like the voltages of the input. Gives the diagram of what it's supposed to like look like if you're trying to think about it. Um, has a graphs in it. Um, it this is like the reason I got this. Um, this D multiplexer in the synthesizer you have uh, a sequencer and every sequencer that I've seen is either a, uh, you have like a, a chip that counts to 16 and then you have a potentiometer that adjusts the uh, frequency of the voltage controlled oscillator. Um, but digital ones, like, like the ones that I've uh, started playing with, I imagine what you would do is you would play a note, and whatever note you were playing when the sequencer um, was activated, then uh, that note would be saved. And I was trying to come up with an idea of how to do that. And so the reason I would use this multiplexer would be uh, basically. 8 channel analog logic level conversion. So, with 8 channels, you can get um, 8 bits of digital data. But, I'm trying to do this all analog. If you were doing 8 octaves of music, um, and every octave has 12 notes, no, no, let's say you're doing 10, because 10 will. Okay, so the. the the range of human hearing is uh, 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. So, if we do the math, how many octaves can the human, human people hear? The first octave, say, starts at 20, uh, doubles exponentially, so 40, uh, that's one octave. Uh, then we go to 80, that's uh, two octaves, 160 hertz. That's uh, three octaves. By the way, the human voice, the fundamental frequency of our human voice, is between 80 and 220 um, hertz, which is how many times your vocal cords vibrate a second. Okay, so 160 to uh, 320, that would be the fourth octave. 320 to 640, that would be the fifth octave. Um, 1, 2, 8, 0 would be the 6th octave, um, 1, or no, th 2, 5, 6, 0, it was 1, 2, 8, 0 is the 6th octave, 2, 5, 6, 0 is the 7th octave, um, 5, 1, 2, 0 is the 8th octave, um, one, zero, two, four, zero is the ninth octave, and then the tenth octave would be, um, 20,480 hertz, which is right at the edge of human hearing. So let's say there's ten octaves that you want to, that you want to, uh, that you can conceivably hear. Each octave has twelve notes. 10 times 12 is 120. Binary, or not binary, 8 bits 
um, the first bit is just 0 or 1. That tells you if it's 0 or 1. Um, and then the second, so, so the first bit, you have 1 bit, or you have 1. And the second bit is 2. And the third bit is 4. And the f fourth bit is 8. <laughs> Fifth bit is 16. Uh, sixth bit is 32. Seventh bit is 64, and the eighth bit is 128. So there's 128 bits, and there's 120 possible notes that are in the Western music scales of ten octaves that are in the human hearing range. Um, so I was thinking with this demultiplexer or multiplexer that I could like a, a synthesizer plays things volt per octave. I was thinking if I can pick out like I, I can get a binary or a, a um, 8 bit number that can match up almost precisely with the number of note that I'm playing but the numbers grow exponentially, like we went from like from the first octave 20 hertz to 40 hertz, it's only 20 hertz difference. Um, the tenth octave is 10,000 hertz to 20,000 hertz. So you can use like these exponential converters, um, but this multiplexer might be able to make it simpler. I'm hoping. I'm hoping that's what it'll do. Um, because it can take this 20,480 number and it can break it down a lot. Um, but I was thinking also, like, how do you... How do you... Like, how do you, in an analog way, get to that number? You'd have to have a bunch of uh, transistors where the bases, you'd have 120 transistors for each base. Um, every time you go up a new note, it clicks off uh, the next base and allows that voltage to go through, which would... that'd be a really complicated way of doing it, but that's one. <laughs> so, that's stuff you have to think about. Um, more data sheets. Uh, this is, uh, I bought five of these little, uh, circuits, the chips are just like this, and it will be able to create a, uh, square wave, a triangle wave, and a sine wave, so I could use that with my sequencer. Um, and then somehow I can modify the, uh, or I could use that as a single world, um, VCO or an LFO. Uh, somehow stumbled upon, uh, usynth.com, and he has this voltage-controlled integrator sets filter bandwidth. Um, how would I explain that? Well, in integrator is just like in, uh, function in math, um, where it's in calculus, where you basically say you have a uh, triangle wave going boom, boom, an integrator will smooth that out. That's how I create sine waves. This guy needs a little bit about that. Um, the first ever synthesizer I made was the Atari Punk console off of this. And I specifically used the, uh, these two ones, the Mono Stable, um, multi vibrator and the, uh, A-Stable. No, A-Stable multi vibrator and the Mono Stable, um, operating mode. Um, I was thinking about building my own power supply, so I was like, uh, 
voltage regulators. And I won't go through all of these, but this was a voltage regulator. And I ended up picking up off of the street, not on the go, like a VCR. Because I knew that there was going to be electronic components in there that I would like. And it was a gold mine. It was a gold mine. So I spent a lot of time researching um, how to like make a, a linear voltage regulator. Not only did I get a shit ton of screws and wires, but this thing I just showed you, the voltage regulator, I found one here, right on the power supply. This, this exact thing that I printed out earlier, it's right here. So it, uh, it regulates the DC voltages. And uh, these two big capacitors here uh, are called buffer capacitors. So that if there was ever like a, uh, a jump in voltage, or uh, a jump in voltage, it would be this big one right here would absorb it. Um, if there was a, like a drop in voltage, this little one right here would give it a little, a little boost. Um, Yeah, one's 220 microfarads and one's 100 microfarads. And uh, you can see on the bottom how it's set up. There's a little plus symbols. That's, this is a very common circuit. Every power circuit has it. If you're interested in learning electronics, you have to do a lot of reading. My point about that. What is this? Trusting transistors. So. Here is the gold mine I found. I also got this cool uh, lamp that has a uh, thing in it so I can go. What kind of chip is this? Can you see that? The LM LM294 See right there? LM294 I think this is awesome You can also see all this stuff goodies in here That, oh yeah that thing right here, that blue thing, that is a um, ceramic oscillator. The reason that exists is because there's a chip right here. And so this creates the uh, pulse of time that this chip operates off of. It's pretty nutty. Kind of fun. But, uh, yeah, this, this thing has tons of parts in it that I could use. Um, I can't really use these chips, um, they're kind of, you know, not important, but there's also, there's, there's crystal oscillators right here that normally I would pay, you know, 30 cents, which is fine, but the shipping's going to be five dollars. All of these capacitors, um, an inductor, these like trimmer, trimmer potentiometers right here. These trim potentiometers. Um, inductors, yeah, those are cool. I don't know. If there's a little yellow LED right here. I don't know. Oh, ferrite cable cores. Those are always nice. Those protect against alternating current interference. is in here. Here's another tasty little so it's just a transistor, it's not a voltage regulator. But these caps all look really nice. This one's 47,000 microfarads. 
only 42 points. So it won't kill me. But this one will. That one could kill you. 1500. 15,000. else? Switches. There's nice. I got this because it said CD player on the front. There's a CD thing right here. Um, and, it, and since I'm trying to make synthesizers, I want to get everything that has to do with music. Um, I didn't get. There's not. And there's nothing on the underside because that's just where everything is soldered. There's a nice power supply right here. Which brings me to this is not the first time I've done this. Here is a nice uh, transformer I got from a microwave. Here is a tape deck I got from the stereo that I can make an analog tape delay with. Here's a nice little fan with a uh, little electric motor and this nice little inductor right here. Um, also has a relay and a fuse, which is cool. Because, I mean, I, I have no, no need to use them now, but I might someday. This thing right here is the thing in the microwave that actually generates the uh, microwaves that come out of this. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know how that works. Oh, but it's got a big magnet in it, because I was just fun to connect to it. Oh, yeah, these magnets, you gotta keep them away from all the electronics, or else they'll break them. Um, this is kind of cool. It's got a bunch of switches on it that I could use. And LEDs. Uh, this one has capacitors. This is the big, um, for the stereo, this is the big heat sink for these two voltage regulators right here. So, what this is for the VCR, this is for the stereo, or no, the microwave. So this little, this little part right here is the equivalent of this thing right here. It's connected to this, which has all this. And the more plates there are, the more surface area there is, the more um, heat can be dissipated. And it's got this white goo on it that also helps dissipate heat. Oh. <laughs> Another big transformer. Diode that I forgot about. display, which is kind of cool, potentiometer, right here is a um, light dependent resistor, so I guess if it sees light, then it will turn on, it's really cool to just go through these things and see how they work, and see how all the connections are made. This, this is the motor for the tape deck. Where is it? Because there's some, there's some sort of like copper wire wound around here. And I, oh, that's probably for the writing if it's recording something because it's magnetic tape.
because there's no gears attached to that. They're attached, yeah. This was from the microwave, but I don't know what this does. Oh, this was to, uh, it would turn the uh, plate. Anyway, so that stuff's cool. Another thing I found on the street is a Bose speaker. Perfectly fine. Let's see, it says Bose right there. This is probably like a $300 speaker. Here. Speaker inputs right here. So, again, I'm just picking up a bunch of audio stuff and taking it apart so that I don't have to buy things like this. Here's my box of chips. These are all of the uh, TL074, which I make synthesizers out of. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's probably like $20 worth of chips, but I can make maybe a few thousand dollars worth of synthesizers out of $20 worth of chips. Books. Here I have a bunch of resistors, quarter inch adapters, and then a shit ton of transistors. I even had transistors made in Russia. Knobs. My little. Um, turns out that I thought that I was ingenious for coming up with this. Turns out. There's a company that makes them. And then here's my most complete synthesis right there. I have some MIDI attachments so that I can eventually play it through the computer. And then here's this guy. And this guy's kind of boring, but uh just resistors, uh, tensiometers, push pull pot. Uh, this is the rotor, the 6x5 rotor switches. I can connect a bunch of resistors and capacitors. And capacitors that are uh, ceramic, ceramic capacitors. Um, Electrolytic uh, oh shit. Um, I have the uh, orange drop guitar capacitor, which is a uh, polypropylene with aluminum. Um, multi-layer ceramic. Um, this is unleaded. Or no, this is leaded multi-layered ceramic. Yeah. Tantalum, which is the dielectric in there. Um, these are uh, um, electrolytic capacitors of various, this says uh, 50 volts at 2.2 microfarads and uh, temperature reading of negative 40 to 105 Celsius, blah blah blah, resistors, they resist air, that's cool, and potentiometers which are these, but variable. 
and then uh, interconnects. So. This guy right here, this chip from uh, Russia, would connect. Then there's a, a notch on one side, and there's a notch right here. And voila, the reason we do this is because. Uh, you solder this end to the uh, board because um, if you were to solder this directly to the board it would get too hot and it would break and burn up. Um, what's that? Testing this. Uh, Of solder and this is a solder wick so if you fuck up you can use this to remove uh, solder from the fuck up um, there's wire strippers uh, whatever I just got these uh, this was four dollars from Amazon this is the best clippers I've ever seen soldering iron which fucking sucks. I have to get a new one like every two weeks. And here are some switches and uh, 3.5 millimeter jacks. in a special box because uh, these are the rare items. This is a um, light dependent resistor so like if you had this instead of a potentiometer and you uh, shine a light on it it'll go and you have it connected to an oscillator it'll go wee wee depending on how bright it is. Uh, this is the same thing light dependent resistor um, no light dependent transistor because as you can see it has a has three legs and so the base is activated by light so that is a unique item um, most electronics have fuses these are what tiny little electronics. This is a fuse. You can kind of see the fuse in there. Here's a bunch of crystal oscillators that I got off of their boards. Like I said, if you have a microprocessor chip, you need one of those. These are fucking expensive. <laughs> so a normal resistor costs like a penny. This one, um, I had to get it shipped from London, and it cost about a dollar fifty because it is a, a, a Tempco. It's a um, can't, the brand name is really hard to say, but it, it's hot. It has a negative temperature coefficient, so if you have a synthesizer normally, and you don't have this, the uh, frequency will wobble. Okay. And then standard bat 85 um, center die. Anyway, that's what it's like to uh, get into electronics. And I, uh, I think I'm only starting to get a hang of it now. Well, I mean, I've built up. This book entirely. Um, I have another book that size, 150 pages that I filled up as well. And I'm currently about halfway through this book, which I have 
I dedicated to more um, schematic drawings and stuff. Where's that? My circuit. My favorite circuit. Yeah, that's my synthesizer circuit. That's awesome. Enjoy.